What is your opinion of art? I am very glad you asked me. I would draw the I... question. Which one of these is art? Now take a good look. At the very least, one of them is considered art. But we'll get back to that. The main question for this video, is AI art art? It's possible someone who thinks they're witty may leave a comment saying no. And there are those that think anyone using AI cannot even be an artist. Well, I'm going to prove them all wrong. Okay, ChatGPT, make some art. Okay, so, I guess it won't just decide to make art on its own. But let's start from the beginning and try to understand exactly what art is. This is a question a lot of people have opinions on. Let's go back to the 300s BC and hear from Aristotle. He wrote about the arts in his work Poetics. Here's a summary from art historian and philosopher Will Durant. Artistic creation, says Aristotle, springs from the formative impulse and the craving for emotional expression. Essentially, the form of art is an imitation of reality. It holds the mirror up to nature. Yet the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. For this, and not the external mannerism and detail, is their reality. To put it plainly, old Airy is saying art is all about the looks and the feels. This philosophy of art as being mimetic or realist persisted for a couple of thousand years. Then in the 19th century, we move into the era of modern art. Both these masterpieces, distinct as they are, represent the diverse and boundless scope of the modern art movement. Some criticize it, dismissing it as elitist or overly abstract. They argue that it lacks the technical skills of the old masters. And it's not rare for some to think, I could have done that. This led people to question the very definition of art, most famously with the ready-made artwork, The Fountain. A standard urinal of the time, turned on its side, signed and dated R. Mutt, 1917, and put on a pedestal. Now the backstory here is important. Duchamp had arranged through a friend to submit this under a pseudonym to the newly established Society of Independent Artists. When the board of directors saw a fountain, they said it could not be considered a work of art, that it was indecent, and then voted to exclude it from the show. Duchamp was furious, resigned in protest, and he and his friends got Fountain back, had it photographed by Alfred Stieglitz, and published the photos in a new journal they created. In it, the editors wrote, whether Mr. Mutt with his own hands made the fountain has no importance. He chose it. He took an ordinary article of life, placed it so that its useful significance disappeared under the new title and point of view, and created a new thought for that object. Even within the modern art movement, there have been disagreements. Jackson Pollock believed his paintings should be about the artist's expression, regardless of how it was made. Sometimes I use a brush, but often prefer using a stick. Sometimes I pour the paint straight out of the can. I like to use a dripping, fluid paint. A method of painting is the natural growth out of a need. I want to express my feelings rather than illustrate them. Technique is just a means of arriving at a statement. However, minimalist artists had different ideas. And there was a lot of desire to get away from that sensibility where the individual's expression was put into the canvas. The idea was that the art object, be it sculpture or painting or installation, should kind of be as far removed from the author as possible. Minimalist artists stripped art of the burden of being about something else. They presented art not as an imitation of reality, but as an object unto itself. In 1999, Tracy Emin displayed her work my bed in the Tate Gallery and was considered for the Turner Prize. And critics questioned its art worthiness. Artist Trevor Chamberlain. I feel that Tracy Emin is more of an entertainer than an artist. I don't really think it's art. I think Turner must be turning in his grave. And in 2012, Damien Hirst was criticized for his works. Uh, I think Damien Hirst's work is worthless as a, as a work of art. He's not an artist. He shouldn't be in the Tate. People are only spending money on Damien Hirst because they think it's a work of art. And if it isn't, then they're wasting their money. Even now, debates about the definition of art are ongoing. However, there is some general agreement with the art philosopher George Dickey, who popularized the institutional classification of art. A work of art, in the classificatory sense, is one, an artifact, 
to a set of the aspects of which has had conferred upon it the status of candidate for appreciation by some person or person acting on behalf of a certain social institution, the art world. According to this idea, the first prerequisite of art is the artifact. Put simply, it's something made by a person. The second prerequisite is basically that someone needs to say that thing is art. He clarifies what would be considered the art world later in his writings. The more important question is that of how the status of candidate for appreciation is conferred. In one sense, a number of persons are required, but in another sense, only one person is required. In fact, many works of art are seen only by one person, the one who creates them, but they are still art. I can simplify it even further and say, to be considered art, you must have three elements, a thing, a person, and an intention. And as a quick side note, this is just for classifying something as art, not whether it's good art. There are other philosophies of art, but in my mind they're either too strict with some rigid aesthetic requirements, or they're too lax, essentially saying anything is art. Dickey's institutional theory strikes a good middle ground. With that in mind, let's take a look at generated art. The idea of generative art involves a system which operates with some degree of autonomy to create the artwork. These systems can be algorithms, computer programs, or a machine that can generate art with limited input from the artist. One of the earliest pioneers of generative art was Max Bense, a German philosopher who defined generative aesthetics in the early 1960s. In 1965, he wrote, the system of generative aesthetics aims at a numerical and operational description of characteristics of aesthetic structures. These can be manipulated and applied to an unordered set of elements so as to produce what we perceive macro-aesthetically as complex and orderly arrangements and micro-aesthetically as redundancies and information. To oversimplify it, Bensi is suggesting a method of using math to take unorganized data and make it into something that looks nice. In 1963, the magazine Computers and Automation started an annual computer art contest, and the first winner was called Splatter Pattern. It was produced as a plot of the radial and tangential distortion of a camera lens. It is a valid plot of an actual computer-found solution, graphed automatically by a data plotter. In 1964, the winner was an image that shows trajectories of a ricocheting projectile, range versus altitude. In these examples, people created the programs to output the images, but where the pixels were plotted was all driven by the computer. And in 1965, there were multiple art exhibits showcasing computer-generated art, including students of Max Benze, Georg Nies, and Frida Naki. Other respected artists in the generative art field include Vera Molnar and John Maida, showing that computers and algorithms do not necessarily exclude an artist's works from being considered art by the greater art world. This idea of artists who'd been working in a way with visual systems before they started working with computers, and when they started working with computers, that was a way to move their ideas into a new form, almost like switching from one medium to another while keeping the ideas consistent. Because at that time, in the early 1960s, digital computers were really hard to access. They were mostly in different labs. And so there were a number of engineers and mathematicians who also are pioneers of generative art as well. Okay, let's go back to the question I posed at the beginning of this video. Which one of the images is art? If you chose the third one, that's actually from Shutterstock. The first one, that's Doll E being prompted to create an abstract painting. The middle one is from artist Mark Rothko. This is a prime example that the artifact itself is not enough to determine artistic value, otherwise your bedroom wall would be worth as much as a Rothko painting. So finally, let's look at AI art. One of the earliest computer systems that was able to create unique art was Aaron in the late 1960s. It was developed by Harold Cohen while he was at UC San Diego. I think creativity is a relative term. Clearly the machine is being creative to the degree that every time it does a drawing, it does a drawing that nobody's ever seen before, right. including me. I don't think it's currently as creative as I am in writing the program. I, I think for, for a program to be fully creative, it has to be able to modify its own performance, and that's a very difficult problem. 
This required him to input various rules to create the image. But then in 2014, a team led by Ian Goodfellow proposed the Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN. This essentially allowed the computer to create its own rules. And therein lies the adversarial nature of this. We have a, a generator creating fake samples and sending them to a discriminator. The discriminator is taking a look at a given sample and figuring out, is this a fake sample from the generator? Or is this a real sample from the domain set? Now, this sort of scenario is often applied in image generation. Using a GAN, an art collective named Obvious would create the first art piece created by an AI that would go up for auction. Christie's will be the first auction house to offer artwork created by artificial intelligence. What? We are seeing the portrait of Edmond de Bellamy. Well, we've estimated at seven to $10,000. Uh -huh. um, and we put a lot of thought into the estimate because if we put a huge amount on it, people would say, well, what are you basing that valuation on? Because this is the first. And Richard, who is the artist? Is the artist the AI program or the people who wrote the AI well, program? Well, there you go. You've just cut to the chase. I mean, it, or is it is it the person that wrote the algorithm? Is it is it a sort of a combination of the artwork that was uploaded? Is it the people that sort of tweaked the software? I think this is why this is so inspiring and interesting, because We've never really had to ask those questions before. This piece would end up selling for over $400,000. At this point, you could argue that the amount of effort needed for programming the GAN was substantial enough to cross the line of human creation. However, with the public releases of Doll e Stable Diffusion, and Mid-Journey in 2022, anyone could add in a prompt and generate an image. This common argument against AI art, though, focuses solely on the artifact. AI artists create their pieces by entering prompts into a machine. That's the extent of the work they contribute to its initial creation. It's the exact argument used against Duchamp's fountain 100 years ago. It ignores the importance of the prompt. That prompt is chosen by a person with some intention of making art. Many times, numerous works are generated, with the prompt being refined over each generation. This was the process that Jason Allen used when creating his award-winning Theatre d'Opera Spatial. I entered a series of prompts, adjusted the scene, selected portions to focus on, and dictated the tone of the image. Sharifa Lafon, executive director of Denver Digerati, says, Modern art introduced the idea of art being as, or more, important than the tangible thing. Even photography had to fight for respect at the dawn of the 20th century. Again, the artifact is just one aspect of the art. The AI won't just randomly choose to create something. It requires someone with the intention of making a piece of art. Of course, this also means that not all AI-generated images are art. Just like painting a canvas red doesn't mean you're the next Rothko. Programs like Dali or Mid-Journey are just tools. Nothing more, nothing less. And these tools can be used for cynical purposes or they can be used to create beautiful works of art. For everyone using AI images to create cheap marketing materials, there are also people like Anna Riddler, pushing the boundaries of true artistry. So, the main question, is AI art art? The only honest answer to that is, it depends. After all, we must remember that art is art. Still, on the other hand, water is water, isn't it? And east is east, and west is west. And if you take cranberries and stew them like applesauce, it tastes much more like prunes and rhubarb does. Now, uh, now you tell me what you know. <laughs>